Well, welcome back to irishracing.com and we're delighted to welcome to the program this afternoon, five times Irish champion jockey, multiple Irish and English derby winner. I won't even count how many group one wins you have. The one and only Johnny Martha. Johnny, thanks for joining us uh, on a, what's a very busy morning for you. Yeah, busy morning, yeah. We're just about finished now, but it was, yeah. We've got all the horses out, so getting ready for this evening. So start for a big weekend. And just to briefly go back to, to last week, Roy Lascott uh, coming out as, as top jock, going in as a 50 to 1 outsider to be the top jockey, picking up an extra couple of rides. And what, what does it mean to you? It meant a lot because, as you said, the start of the week it was um, looking bad. You know, I got uh, had four rides over the first three days. Um, you know, I did fancy Soul Power. I thought Simeon had a good chance in the Ascot Gold Cup. But to come out on top of uh, you know the, the best race meeting, you know Royal Ascot, something special. It was very special to me, and you know it's it, it's not easy to do it. So it, it, it's extra special when to, to come out on top. And especially, it's even better when it's a part-time job. I wouldn't say it's part time, you know what I mean? I'm still very much involved in riding, but uh, yeah, I suppose everybody's thinking like that, so uh, maybe maybe that's what's wrong. But no, I, I still believe I can I can do the job. I'm still I'm fit, I feel fit, I feel very well. I'm riding well, and it's given the right horses, I'm sure. And a, another winner last night? Another winner last night, yeah, I picked up a nice uh, spare ride. So maybe people after Ascar are saying, she's maybe he still is riding, so it's, 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 it's. I'm still very much involved in the jockey package. And, and, and the connection you have with Soul Power, I mean, the, the two of you seem to be the perfect combination. Um, it, 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 must be the, it must be the highlight of, of every time. It was, it was, it was great. And uh, well, I've ridden them a lot of times, so I'm, about the time I've got used to how to ride them, you know. But uh, Evan just worked great the other day. He loves that, you know, just hold on to him for that last kick. And when I think everybody's seen the kick he had last week, it was a devastating burst of pace. He came home the last furlong really quick. And it was great for Eddie and for the horse to win another group one because people kind of thought he was a 100 to one outsider. But he's a very good horse and on his day, I think he showed it uh, on, on last Tuesday. And, and, and it, it was great for everything to come into place from because he's, he's had a lot of hard luck stories in the past, but for everything to work out perfectly, he has that tremendous turn of foot. But um, sometimes it's been ground conditions, sometimes he's got hampered when he's making a run, but every, everything came to, well, to, that, to fruition. That's just it, you know, there's a lot of necks and heads just separates from being very successful and just missing out. So he's just missed out a couple of times, so it was great. As I said, for the horse, just Evan the fall right on Ascot, the first day of Royal Ascot, you know, it was a great result. And the owners, like the owners have been patient with me, you know, I messed them up on a few times and, you know, come too late a few times and, it, you know, it was great. Great for everybody involved, it was a great win. And Johnny, we want to talk about your, your training, your new training career. Uh, you're going to go into the, the Derby weekend for you is obviously a huge weekend, has been for, for, for many, many years with your affiliation to uh, the, 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 the super elite stables here in Ireland. What, what difference is it going to be for you this weekend going there as a trainer as well as a jockey? It is a bit different, you know, everyone is, uh, you know, you, you kind of have everything keyed up for this weekend. It's a big weekend, you try to have all your horses in top form, you have, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's five months down the line. You should know where to, where to, where to fit in now. You know what I mean? Uh, we have a couple of runners, uh, two-year-old runners over the, the weekend, which is always nice. It's just, you, you're putting them in against, you know, all the other top stables, best two-year-olds, because everybody targets Derby weekend. So we've got two, two nice two-year-olds running, and then we have a few horses in the handicaps. So we're, we're hoping we can have a good weekend. And of course, Royal Diamond is probably the main one. He's. Uh, He's running the Curra Cup. He won the Ledger last year, a mile and six at the Curra. So, you know, everything is, is, is pointing towards a good run. He seems in good shape. He came out of uh, York pretty well. So the Curra Cup has been his target for a while. So it's, it's a huge weekend. As a jockey, it always was huge. And now you have the responsibility of trying to get the horses there, fitting well for the day. It's, it's, it's more demanding, but it's one we're enjoying. We've got a great team here, good staff, great team of people. Uh, we're all striving towards the one goal, and that's uh, to train as many winners as we can, uh, get the best out of the horses we can, and uh, you know, look after the horses and help them care is, is, is very important here as well. So we're we're really looking forward to this weekend. Uh, and tell me, will it be? Is it a very frustrating? Will it be a frustrating thing as a trainer, not to be able to give yourself a bollocking as a jockey? Yeah, it is. It's a bit different, all right. You know what I mean? And you do find there is a little bit more pressure on. You know what I mean? Because uh, you know how hard it is to get here now. You know, you know how hard it is just to get to the races. It's, 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 it's a lot of hard work goes in. Like we're going since uh, the second week in January. It's, it's been a long, slow build up to this. And uh, yeah, when you, but I know when I get it wrong. So you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty hard on myself anyway. 
You know, I'm pretty hard on myself anyway. I'm pr not hard, but you know, you know when you mess up. And sometimes messing up means, you know, you, you learn a lot from it. But uh, yeah, I can't even, can't even blame the jockey anymore. And, and, and being a trainer now, obviously with your affiliation with the Aidan O'Brien stable and with John Ox, how, how much has that helped you in your preparation and becoming a full-time trainer? Oh, it's a huge, huge help. You know, you see what they do, you see the, the, the detail they go into, um, you see how they train the horses, you see the fitness level it takes. You see what it takes to compete at the top. You know these, these, these. You know that's what we want to be. We want to compete at the, the top level, uh, racing against all the top trainers, the top owners in the world, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, 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 to match that, and it's not easy. But I think I've, I've seen, you know, a lot of, a lot of great things. And the trainers do a lot of great things, and hopefully it rubbed off on me. And do you, just as a trainer, your main affiliation as an owner is obviously Andrew Tingler. What, what kind of a man is he? Obviously there has to be a great... You, you've, you've rode for Andrew uh, for the last couple of seasons. Um, now as a trainer, and primarily his horses here in the stable, there must be a great rapport between the two of you. There must be a great connection between the two of you um, to, be, to be moving forward the way you are. Yeah, I think we get on well together. You know, Andrew's you know, he's a bit like myself. He's a hard worker. You know, he's, he's pretty straight. He tells you exactly what he thinks and what he expects. Um, you know, there's no hidden agenda. We're pretty upfront. I tell him everything that's happening here, and he tells me everything that's expected or what he'd like to happen. And we were a good team. You know, he's he's got his partner Alison, who's a very you know she's a big part of the team as well. She's kind of his his racing manager now. And I've got Orla on board, who's looking after all the the um, the, the book work and the, you know, the office work, which is <laughs> thankfully it's I don't have to go in there very much. But you know, we're a good team. You know, we've two we've two good teams together and um, I think he's happy with what he's achieved here. Yeah, you, see, you see this year the way he moved all his horses over to Ireland, which is, you know, it's, it's huge. He has 40 horses in Ireland here now. And uh, we look for more success and continue his support because you know, he's a, he's a, he's a top, top guy and he's, he, he's been very, very good to me. And I suppose without Andrew, we wouldn't have got, we wouldn't have got this operation up and going. Well, it's a fantastic operation you have just here right beside the Coral Race Course. It makes it nice and handy for the transport of the horses anyway for this evening. Talking about this evening, we want to talk about the three runners that you have. Three runners that are all still intended to go tonight? Yes, all going. Um, we'll talk about the filly in the first race, uh, Callery. Um, she she um, last time out, beaten a long way, but uh, looks looks yeah. looks a decent decent enough. She would have been she would have been good toward Nile says if she didn't get hampered. The horse beside her just fell, and Rory clearly got a bad fall, and the, the loose horse bumped into her. So. She got a. She didn't get a great experience, I suppose, first time out. But we learned a lot about her. She's very straightforward filly. I see the stars, so I think it'll be the first see the stars winner. So we're we're we're, we're going to do that. And uh, Mick McAnan has been very positive. He's been riding out some of the see the stars, and he's been very positive about the uh, the the sons and daughters of see the stars. He says they're they they look like a decent decent crop of horses. Yes, yeah. And this one, as I said, a uh, very good temperament, which is always you know it's always a help. She's a great temperament. She does Evan. She she's not spectacular. She, she kind of goes around the place pretty quiet. She eats, she sleeps, and any, anything we ask her to do, she does. So she's very pleasing, and we're looking forward to a good run tonight in the first. Well, you must think about it. You had her entered up in the group, did you, the group race initially, and then... Yeah, then I put her in the, the group maiden. race, because sometimes that race can just uh, cut up a little bit, you know. It's, um, it's one of those races where you can get just a couple of runners, but, you know, I'm kind of dreaming down the first. line, so... But hopefully she will make up into a group filly, but I suppose it makes sense to try and win a maiden first. Well, I suppose a derby, a derby weekend maiden is like a group race anyway. So well, as I said to you, when you see the, the, the pedigrees of some of the horses there, you know, you have two from Watchmen, uh, two from uh, Bally Dyle Aiden, and, uh, you know, all the, all the top trainers are, are, are involved. So it's, it is going to be a hot maiden, but, you know, she has a run under her belt, and some of them haven't, so she'd be a bit more streetwise than most. Do you have a chance? I think she has, yeah. Johnny, we'll talk about uh, Sacred uh, Dragon. Who, who is, is, is he been here long? Yeah, he came to us there um, a couple of months ago. He's, he's settled in well. He ran at the Coral. We fancied him. I thought he'd run well, but it looked like it was a very good race on the day. So we're stepping up and trip. He's gone up two furlongs. So his first time running over ten furlongs. Um, nice big horse. Will improve all the all through the year. Again, I think he's he's another one that you know should should run a big race for us tonight. So yeah, I was just watching the race there. About about three out, he just seemed to get caught a little bit flat footed. They went slow at the Coral that day, and then the quickened. And when the quickened. He kind of got flat footed, but he was staying on then again at the end. He wasn't beaten far, and as I said, the winner has gone on to win the Hunt Cup. So, you know, and a lot of horses in that race have run well. And the extra two should, should, the extra should, two should help as well. Well, I think he will. You know, I think he will. And again, a chance? I think he has, yeah. Vegas chance? 
Well, he's a favourite on the paper, and then bookies, then bookies are not slow. <laughs> And Johnny, then your last runner, you've a, a, a one, um, one gone in the, in the last race, I think, the Maiden. Yes. Um, Flight of the Seeker. Flight of the Seeker, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. him. Uh, had a run at Navin, I was a bit disappointed, I thought he was a bit better, but the ground, they got a lot of rain and the ground was, um, the ground was soft, it turned a bit soft that day. So it's good to firm up there, I think he liked the ground, he's a nice big horse, and we're hoping that, you know, he'll, he'll put a much improved performance today. Again? We well, listen, he's, he's, he's 20 to 1. But hopefully he can he can run into a place. Very good. And then you've gone for for your old pal Eddie uh, in the handicap. He's in the sprint. Uh, Yulong Bijou, I think the name yes. of the horse is. Yep. Um, a little disappointing at Fairy House last time out in the five horse race. They're they're dropping him down a little bit in trip. Do you think he has a, a squeak this evening? Yeah. Well, Eddie Eddie's good with them sprinters, and he liked this horse. He won he won a maiden first time out for Eddie, and then you know he's probably he's thrown into deep end then, so he's still probably learning. You know, them five five runner races sometimes can be a bit messy, and he did. He looked like he got messed about a bit, but uh, you know, it's it's tough for him going in again the season sprinters. But he obviously likes him if he's going to put him in that race. And again, um, for for one of Eddie's to win first time out, he must be smart. And as I said, hopefully now he start to fulfil that promise that he showed first time. Okay, but so Johnny, out of, out of the four runners today, out of the four runners today, we're, we're we're in recessionary times. A lot of our viewers are sitting at home waiting on Johnny Murtha to give them. A tip for tonight out of your four rides who's who's our best chance well i'm not riding sacred dragon because he's only got eight stone five but i suppose he's he's probably the best one tonight so nile is on him yeah, yeah. nile rides him so he, he rode him his last bit of work and he's very happy with him and he said he's come out with the, the race well and he thinks a mile and a quarter of the current will be right down his street so there's a lot of positives but you know, they're hard to win they're hard to win every weekend <laughs> Well, I, we wish you the very best for taking it, and if he doesn't win, you can still give him a good bollocking. Yeah, well, I'll be able to give him a bollocking if he doesn't win, yeah. <laughs> well, Johnny, listen, thanks very much. I know you're a very busy man. You have a huge weekend ahead of you, and we wish you all the very best luck, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure.